Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. A simple top like the one I'm wearing can be a great wardrobe staple. If you know how to sew, you never need to buy another one. Today I want to show you how to take a simple top like this and duplicate it or knock it off into as many different fabrics as you like. So you can take a top like this or this or even this. And you can hack it, tweak it, add fancier details. You can make it up in as many fabrics as you like. Today, I'm making one for my dear old mom. She likes very simple pieces that are easy to get on and off, and she loves jewel tones. So this is the top that I'm gonna be duplicating for her. Together, we found this really soft, beautiful fabric in a color that she loves, and I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to knock off a simple shape in a beautiful fabric, and you can just make it again and again. If I knew I was going to be making this top multiple times, I would go ahead and trace it onto paper so that I have that pattern and it makes it even easier for next time. And if you want to learn how to do that, then check out this video where I did that with a pair of pajamas. It's the same process. But today I want to show you a lightning fast way where you just trace it right onto the fabric. So if you're just going to knock something off once, this is the video for you. I'm going to be sewing it up on my serger but I'll also show you how you can sew and finish your edges at the same time on your regular sewing machine. So when I bought the fabric, I just made sure I bought enough for the length of the top for her, plus the length of the sleeve, about a yard and a half. You'll need your matching thread, and you can do a contrast fabric if you wanted, a contrast fabric, like if you had a small bit of ribbing, you could do a contrast fabric on the neck and maybe a band on the sleeve but that's not even necessary. I'll just be using all of the same fabric. I think that's all you need to know to get started. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I wanna do is fold my garment neatly in half and take a minute to smooth this. I'll be re-smoothing it in a second, but I just wanna tell you that when you're working with a symmetrical garment, you wanna take that garment and fold it in half so you're just tracing half. It'll turn out to be symmetrical that way. If you see any tutorials where they just lay this down flat, not fold it in half, and they trace around the whole thing, no, no, move on. <laughs> Find a better tutorial. A symmetrical garment should be traced in half. Now, as I say, I'm going to be tracing this right onto the fabric. So what I've done here, I've brought my two selvages together for a lengthwise fold, but now I've folded it again a second time. So I'm bringing my two selvages over to the fold. So my fabric is nicely folded, my top is nicely folded, and the fold on top of the double fold of the fabric. Everything is as smooth and neat as I can make it. And now I just need to double check. I felt along these seams here between the front and the back and they are identical. Now that's not always the case. The front and back usually does have a difference in the armhole, but if they don't have a difference, it makes this project even easier. I'm gonna be tracing just the back neck, and then I'll add in the, the front neck, and you'll see it'll just come together easily. So I'm just going like pinky finger width away from my edge there, and same here. Yeah, I actually don't want any seam allowance on that neck because I'll be adding in a binding. All right, so I'm gonna make a little mark where I just pinky finger width away from that seam here, and then the same at the bottom of the armhole. And then I'll continue tracing. But at the bottom here, I want a little bit more, more like thumb width away. So now we just have to deal with the armhole or arm side. And to do that, I'm gonna peel this sleeve back. Now these little ticks that I originally put there, those are gonna be important because I wanna make sure I'm not distorting it and pulling it too far away. So I'm gonna make sure that's just sort of still in line with where it was and peel back until that seam is at the edge. Find your seam, peel back, try to keep in its proper shape as possible, trying not to distort anything here. I just need to make sure I'm connecting with those original tick lines there. Good. So just before I lift it, now I'm going to just add on where the front neck goes and it's going to blend into the same point as the back neck. Good, just like that. So that's my whole front and back. 
and I'm going to cut with just on the back neckline here. And then I'll be cutting this off the front piece later after I remove the back. So I'm just gonna cut out the whole thing. So then I'll move out the middle layer. I just need to get that out of the way, bring this edge back together, and then cut this one down for the front neck. A couple of details I should mention here is I need to make sure I've got a right angle at both the center front and center back. A right angle there is important so I don't end up with a point or a V. Same at the bottom here, this has to be a right angle for the same reason. And let's move on to the sleeve. Okay, so with my fabric is still folded in that double fold, so there's two layers on the fold here. And now I'm going to lay my sleeve there. And again, the only reason I'm able to do it this way is because this sleeve is perfectly symmetrical. Most often though, I'd have to open this out and trace the sleeve one side and then the other. So again, same idea. I'm putting a little tick at the top of that, a little tick at the bottom, and then just adding just that small bit of seam allowance and then a little bit more maybe a thumb width of seam allowance at the bottom of the sleeve okay now i'll lift the sleeve and trace that seam i'll do half from this side and then half from the other side bring it back down and then peeking under here making sure i'm not distorting anything and I should end up connecting with my other line here. There we go. Good. I can smooth that out. Just cut that. Okay, so there's my two sleeves. Okay, so now all I need is a band for the neck. To get a measurement of the neckline, I think the easiest way for me right now is just to pin the shoulder seam together where it's going to be sewn. You take the front and back separately and measure that whole neckline. It's 10 inches on the fold, so 20 all together while I'm not stretching it. So I want 75% of that measurement for my neckband. So 15 inches for my neckband by two inches. And this neckband absolutely has to go across the width of the knit so that it can stretch over your head. I'm going to be whipping my whole top together on the serger, everything except for the hems. But before I go to the serger, I just want to show you how you can use your regular machine. So if you have a machine that has multiple different stitches, see if you can find one similar to this, um, where you get stitching on both sides so that you're still stitching the seam, but overlocking as well because it does resemble surging the most because it has it's more balanced it's got a solid row of stitching on both sides so i'm going to try that little stitch out on the on the neckband so that's pretty good i mean it looks like surging doesn't it it still has enough stretch to be able to sew a knit garment together so that's pretty good i think that's a pretty good option now I'm going to run over to the serger and just serge the whole rest of the garment together. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is serge the two shoulder seams. So I've got front and back, right sides together, and knits tend to roll to the right side. So just pull that out, get your edges together, and serge. There's the back with the higher neck, the front with the lower neck, and here's the whole armhole. And on a casual knit garment like this, I always prefer to sew the side seam after I've placed the sleeve. The sleeves are symmetrical, it doesn't matter which one I grab. While I've got the sleeve still folded in half, I'll make just small little snip at the top of the sleeve. I like to think of it this way, the sleeve is the mountain, and we're going to be sewing it into the valley. So lay it out on your table this way, so you've got your valley and your mountain, 
bring the top of the sleeve to that shoulder seam. The center of the sleeve is pinned to the center of the armhole and then corners go together. Whenever you're pinning, you don't just start at one end and work your way to the other end. Pin all of your matching points first. Then pin in between. And you can see because we've got that mountain and valley situation, the edges don't fall together naturally. So you have to bring them together. Any difference in fullness, evenly distributed. So I don't pin a lot, but whenever I'm setting a sleeve, I definitely pin. I'll pin both and then serge both. Somehow I didn't film serging the sleeves, but you just serge from pin to pin, taking out each pin as you get to it. Before I sew my side seams, I'm going to serge right across the bottom edge of both sleeves, just because it is easier to serge a straight line than to serge it around the circle after that side seam's been serged. So across the bottom of both sleeves. So then I'll put the sleeve right sides together. So I'm matching up the sleeve corners and I'm not going to pin this seam, but of course you could if it makes you more comfortable. Once I'm connected there, I'll just find my next matching point. So that's the underarm seam. Good. And once I reach that matching point, then I find the next one, which is the bottom corner of the side seam. So I'll just hold that together until I get there. Before I do the other side seam, I'm going to go across the whole bottom edge for the same reason that I did the sleeves first. It's just easier to do a straight line than it is to do a circle. Good. So with that whole bottom edge serge now, now I'm going to do the other side seam. And then find my next matching point. Good, so everything is actually all surged together already. All I need to do now is the neckband and the sleeve hems and the hem on the bottom. Good, so to do the neckband, I wanna do what I call quarter marking. So I'm bringing the two shoulder seams together here, one little notch at center front, one little notch at center back, and make sure they are small or else you'll have a hole later. And then if I bring those two notches together, that shows me where the side is because it's not the seam. The seam is not the halfway point because the front neck is lower. So the, the halfway point is a little bit more toward the front. Okay, so to prepare the neck band, we've got it sewn together. I'm just gonna press that seam to one side and then fold it in half right sides out. And for this step to press that, you really do want to take a second to make sure your edges are together. It's really easy to have your edges not meet and then you run into problems. I'm going to fold that on the seam there so that I can find the point that's opposite that little small snip shows me center front. And if I bring center front to center back, that shows me the two halfway points. I like to put the seam to the center back. So notch to the notch that's just in front of the seam, center front to center front, notch to the notch, not to the seam. If I stretch that now, I can see that that's going to fit in there just perfectly. If the neckband doesn't have to stretch to fit in there, it's not going to lay flat on the body. It's gonna stand up tall. I do find that cutting the band 75% of the neck is easy to calculate and it's really, it just works out perfectly. And now I'm just gonna take that to the serger and serge around that circle. So that's gonna sit nicely, perfect. Okay, so there's just the hems left to do. So I've got my sewing gauge set for one inch, 2.5 centimeters. Anything less than two centimeters, you might still find that the, the hem is going to roll. 
So a good two centimeters, two and a half is perfect for the bottom edge of any t-shirt. And I'm gonna do the same on the sleeve. So I'll use my zigzag stitch, one millimeter on the width, two millimeters on the length. Do you see here where it's trying to rope, right? It's trying to twist. Just smooth that out. Don't let that roping happen. So that'll work nicely. That'll be just fine. To hem the sleeve, if your circle is big enough to get onto your free arm, then go ahead and use that. If your sleeve is grabbing this tightly and not sliding around, then don't use it. It's not my preference. Instead, what I prefer is to turn the sleeve right side out, take this circle of the sleeve, don't put it down facing down where you can't see, but put that circle of the sleeve facing up. And now I'm gonna put, I'll put my presser foot inside that circle. Okay, everything is sewn. It's just time for a final press, especially on the neckline and the hems. I want to push that seam allowance down and look how nicely that neckline sits. That 75% measurement just works out perfectly. Look at the difference that the final press makes. Here's my sleeve. This is the one I've pressed. This is the one I have not yet pressed. And I don't know if you can see that difference, but to me, it takes it from looking homemade to looking professional. So you're not done until you've trimmed your threads and done your final press. Okay, so this is my mom's original top. And then this is the knockoff. So it's really soft, it hangs nicely. I think she'll find it easy to get on and get off and she'll be comfortable and I think she'll really be happy with this. So that's it for today's video everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today and until next time, you take care. I never expected to be 93, but I never expected to look that good when I was 93. So this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> okay, well done. <laughs>